must receive And now I won't be in The effort to be free See pointless from above You're looking down at me I'd rather stay below Than have you staring up at me Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today we are checking out The Past Recedes by John Frusciante, one of my all-time favourite guitar players and proper musical genius, this guy. Um, and doesn't disappoint in this song. Some really interesting things going on rhythmically in the verses. Probably the same thing that most people will struggle with is this. Uh, the verses uh, have a time signature change between 4-4 four, four and 3-4, or you could think of it as a big 7-4, but I think it's easier to think in 4-4, four, 3-4 four, four, uh, for the counting at least. Um, you know, lots of interesting stuff. Frusciante's really good at doing this uh, you know, taking a simple kind of chord sequence or whatever and adding just enough spice to keep it interesting and add, put his own touch on it, you know, and keeping things really musical. So uh, that's uh, therein lies his genius, I think. So uh, let's start off by looking at the verse. And we're going to start with just the, looking at the chords and then I'm going to take you through the rhythm without the chords because the rhythm is can be a little bit tricky. But if we do the count and you learn how to do it, don't, though, just stick with the counting. You've got to listen to the song a lot of times to make sure that you get it in your ears properly, you know. So... In we go, the verses. G chord, four finger G you want to use here. So second fret, thir uh, sorry, third fret, second fret, open, open, third fret, third fret, okay? Third and fourth fingers on the thinnest two strings. Then regular D chord, regular A minor, and regular E minor, okay? That's all you need for the verses. But the rhythm, okay, seems a little bit odd. And the reason is because we're moving between this 4-4 and 3-4 bar, um, which gives it a kind of, not disjointed, because it's, it's, it's really well done, because often odd times can feel a little jerky, but it doesn't feel like an odd time. It feels musical and natural, which is, uh, you know, hard to do and, and, and very cool. So what I'm going to do is just explain the count to you. And like I've said a few times now, you want to listen to it a lot, because listening is better than counting. But counting can really help, especially if you're trying to learn a pattern like this or struggling with it. Learning what the how to count it and, and be able to make the right motions with your hand is going to really help. So... I just do it a couple of times at full speed for those guys that can just write it out real quick and then I'll take you through it real slowly. So the, the pattern, three, four, one e and a two and three e and four, one e and a two and three, one e and a two and three e and four, one e and a two and three. Okay, that's the pattern. So it's moving between four beats in the bar, three beats in the bar. Let me break it down a little bit more for you. So, so let's break it down bar by bar. And the first bar, one e and a two and three e and four. One e and a two and three e and four. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down. One e and a two and three e and four. One e and a two and three e and four. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down. Can you see that the hand keeps moving there? It's really, really important. And you'll see, if you watch the video of John, he's not move, making big movements all the time, but there's still little movements. He's still feeling it. Sometimes in, um, you want to start off by making big movements to keep make sure that you're feeling it right. But after a little while, you, you don't make these huge movements with your hand. You might just make them real little, but the fact that you're still doing the movement is what helps you keep your time solid, okay? So... One e and a two and three e and four. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down. Down, up, down, down, up, down, down. Okay, that's the first bar. Second bar, 
One e and a two and three. One e and a two and three. One e and a two and three. Down, up, down, down, down. Down, up, down, down, down. One e and a two and three. One e and a two and three. One e and a two and three. Okay, you want to do those things over and over again and, and write it down. Write down one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a one e and a two e and a three e and a. And then write down where the downs and ups are, okay? It's really, really helpful to write that stuff down so you can kind of follow it along with your eyes. Remember as well, you should be tapping your foot on the beat as well. Not where you strum, but on the beat. So where the numbers are, you should be tapping your foot. That's also really important. It's gonna help you deal with these kind of odd times quite a lot. So let's put those two bars together now. So three, four, one E and a two and three E and four, one E and a two and three. One e and a two and three e and four. One e and a two and three. One e and a two and three e and four. One e and a two and three. One e and a two and three e and four. One e and a two and three. Okay, doing that, practicing that over and over again is a really, really important part of the puzzle. Okay, you want to work on that. Keep, don't worry about changing chords yet until you can do the rhythm. So if you're still worrying about changing chords while you're doing the rhythm, you probably take you a lot longer to do both. So sort out your rhythm, get that solid, and then apply the chords. Okay, that's really, you know, it's very effective to learn stuff like this that way, to break it into, break the rhythm away from the chords, because the chords can get too distracting. You'll be thinking about making the changes instead of about getting the rhythm solid. Okay? Okay. So once you're confident with that, we add the chords in. We have G for the down, up, down, then D, down, up, down, then A minor, down, down, up, down. So one E and a two and three E and four. Just start with that first bar. One E and a two and three E and four. One E and a two and three E and four. G. Then add the second bar, one E and a two and three E and four, one E and a two and three. So just changing to the E minor for and three, and three is held as well. So it kind of helps, you know, makes it a little easier than if there was something more complicated going on beat three there, rhythmically. So G, three, four, one E and a two and three E and four, one E and a two and three, one E and a two and three E and four. One e and a two and three. One e and a two and three e and four. One e and a two and three. One e and a two and three e and four. One e and a two and three. Okay, so you can see now how those the pieces fit together easier if they've been done separately. I hope. Um, I should also point out that it's the the pattern that I'm showing you is kind of like a, a distillation of the patterns that he plays because there's lots of little variations through the tunes. Even when I play it, there's variations in it. It's not. Uh, this is a kind of a starting point of the groove of the rhythm. But if you put in an extra down strum or an extra up strum somewhere along the way, don't worry about it. Okay, it's important that your groove is still strong, and that you're feeling the rhythm and getting the right amount of beats in the bar. Right, that that stuff's important. But if you add in an extra strum here and there, don't be you know beating yourself up over it at all. It's really not a big deal. Um, now, the very first time uh, he's play, he plays through that, I, I didn't actually count how many it is, probably eight times, uh, and the last time he stops on the A minor chord and it just he lets the A minor hang out. And it doesn't seem to be a, a set number of beats there for that first one. There is for the second time in between the verses. That's a, a set bar of 4-4 four, four gap, but the first one seems a bit arbitrary. Um, so just be aware that that's happening. Again, it's that same sequence, just stop on the A minor and then join back in when you're going to start with the singing. Um, it plays through the verse. At the end of the first verse, there's a stop again on the A minor. So... We're back into the second verse, okay? So it's a bar of four there uh, that second time. So moving on to the pre-chorus, which is the little bit between the verse and the chorus, the rhythms get a little bit kind of unusual here. I just had to actually stop the lesson and do, go and have a quick check uh, on the original recording to make sure I had it right because I was just having a crisis of confidence in my, in my transcription because it is just a little odd. Um, 
we've got, if you think of the verses as being a bar of 4-4 four, four and a bar of 3-4, the pre-chorus is the, still the same verse progression for the first bar. In the second bar, it stays on A minor and the rhythms change, but it's still in 3-4, okay? Um, and then we're going to a B7 chord, but I'll deal with that uh, separately. So, uh, just I'll play this little bit of the A minor, these two bars. So it's the G, D, A minor. Then we go here, G, D, A minor. Okay, so it just stays on the A minor with a different rhythm. Uh, the count is one and a two and three and four. One and two and three and. Okay, so it's all downs in that in that second bar now. Uh, again, uh, G, D, A minor. So it sounds like I'm going to give it to you with the count again. One and a two and three and four. One and two and three and. Okay, so all down strums, we've just, we play the A minor on beat four of the first bar. In the second bar, we don't play on the one that's tied over. We play on the and after one. We hold that over, we play on the and after two, beat three, and and the and after three as well, which will all be down strums. Again, I'll put these rhythms up on the website, so there's some more hints for you there. It's a lot easier to be able to see those rhythms. Um, one more time. One e and a two and three e and four. One and two and three and one. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. Okay. Then we go to a B seven chord, standard, kind of open acoustic grip of B seven. Nothing on the thicker strings. Second fret, first fret, second fret, open second fret. And we play this rhythm. One, two and three and four and. Down, 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 down. One, two, and three, and four, and. Then we move little finger forward one fret, which gives us a B7 sharp five. We're not gonna play on beat one, and we go, and two, and three, and four, and. Okay, so just that second bar of B7. One, and two, and three, and four, and. One, and two, and three, and four, and. Okay, the whole of the pre-chorus, G, D, A minor, and, and, four, and, B7. Okay, once more with the count. Three, four, one, e and a two, and three, e and four, one, and two, and three, and one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and. Okay, it's fairly complicated this tune. There's a lot of a lot of little rhythms going on, but again, listening to the original recording a lot and hopefully writing it down, having it in front of you so you can see what's happening and then playing along nice and slow is the, usually the answer for these kinds of things, okay? So the only other element that we've got to check out now is the chorus, because otherwise it's just these elements repeating around. So I'm sure you can do that on your own listening to the original recording. Uh, the chorus is C chord. D sharp diminished. Okay, hopefully you know C chord. D sharp diminished, first finger, first fret of the fourth string, third finger, second fret of the third string, second finger, first fret of the second string, and little finger, second fret of the thinner string. Okay, so nothing on the thickest two strings. First fret, second fret, first fret, second fret. Then going to E minor, and then to D. And it does that twice. C again, D sharp diminished, E minor, to D, then we finish with C, B minor 7, or B minor 11, I guess you should probably call it, which is first finger, second fret of the fifth string, nothing on the thicker string. Uh, open D string, maybe you can, if, you, if it, you happen to mute it, I wouldn't worry about it. Second finger, second fret of the third string, little finger, third fret of the second string, and maybe playing the open thinner string as well. I'm trying to remember what it is on the original recording. I think it might just be the middle four strings, but that thinner string sounds fine in, in context anyway. Uh, and then to A minor, and then we've got that same B7. Going back into the verses. So um, the rhythm for the chorus, quite relatively simple compared to the other complex uh, rhythm changes we've had in this song. Just one, two, and three, and four, and one, 
two and three and four and down, 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 one, two and three and four and one, two and three and four. But again, there's a lot more other strummings, uh, strummings, <laughs> strummingses. Would you like some strummings with your? So let's add that rhythm now to those chords. So from the C, three, four, one. Does that twice, then to C, B minor, A minor, B, one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and Okay, so uh, one more time through the pre-chorus and the chorus. Make sure you've got the linking of those two things together because it's the, it is really the transition between the verse and the chorus that's the, the weirdest bit. So I'll just play uh, once of the double, uh, the two bars for the verse and then into through the pre-chorus and getting into the chorus, okay? I'll do it a little bit slower though. So, three, four, one and a two and three and four, one and a two and three, one and a two and three and four, one and two and three and one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one. A minor, two and three and four and one, two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. Okay, finished with the wrong chord, but hopefully you got uh, all of the rest of that is is cool. Um, and really learning the tune is just putting together those different pieces. I'm not going to be able to go through the solo in this uh, lesson as genius as the solo is. Definitely worth checking out his you know, lovely playing and, and beautiful melodies and a good lesson in playing over odd times. The fact that the melody is strong in the solo because otherwise, you know, sometimes playing over odd times can feel a little bit awkward. But again, John uh, brings his musicality to the front there uh, for this tune. Um, well, the only other thing that I want to mention with it is the D sharp diminished chord. <laughs> A lot of people kind of find these sort of chords a bit weird, like why is it there and and, and, and it seems a little unusual uh, perhaps in a pop song to, to use this kind of chord. And uh, I just wanted to explain for those of you getting into your music theory, it's actually a secondary dominant and a substitute for a B7 flat 9 chord. Okay, so uh, this particular chord, even though the lowest note he's playing is the D sharp, we're really hearing the B note. This sound, B7 going to E, which is a secondary dominant, it's called. A, a, a B7 in the key, uh, whatever key, it's going to the E minor. Okay, I'm sure you've heard this sort of perfect cadence before. So B7 goes to E minor. So this is a B7 flat 9 going to E minor. That's the sound, we're after this. That's really the, the, the thing that we're hearing there. So if you want to get into a little bit of understanding that kind of harmony, it's in the jazz series on my site. You don't have to be following, you know, and getting really into jazz to learn about this stuff, but it's the lesson on secondary dominance and the use of a seven flat nine chord for, you know, you theory buffs. It's almost certainly uh, Mr. Frashanti is well aware of his harmony and, and theory stuff. Um, and not saying that he was thinking about it when he wrote the tune, because the idea really with that kind of theory is that you learn it all, absorb it all, and then, you know, it just happens kind of naturally without it being too planned. But learning about it gives you new tools that you can use for your, for your own writing and compositions as well. So a uh, little bit of a diversion there into theory land, but hopefully you've enjoyed this tune. And I'll see you for plenty more lessons very soon. Do remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you dig what I do. And do remember that over on the website, more than a thousand free lessons now. Uh, so do go and have look it's all nicely organized so you can find the stuff that you want it's probably easier than uh, uh, bumping around on youtube but anyway you take care of yourselves and i'll see you for plenty more very soon bye bye